Welcome to In the Envelope, a podcast from Backstage, the number one resource for actors and talent seekers. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, and I'm here to guide you through every aspect of the entertainment industry with the help of some of your favorite stars. These intimate, inspirational conversations with today's most award-worthy film, television, and theater artists provide you, dear listener, advice on how to live the creative life, personal stories of success and failure alike, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. It's all about just calibrating and trying to find what specifically motivates you. And your freedom in that is knowing that there are no rules that could limit you as a creative. Hello and welcome to another episode of In the Envelope. Um, I'm your host, Jack, and I and John Boyega is our guest today. That is the voice you just heard, in case that's not obvious. But I am so excited to have a very special guest um, on the podcast today. Hannah, would you like to introduce yourself to listeners at long last? I'd love to. Hello, listeners of <laughs> In the Envelope. It has been... Uh, well, I'm just really glad to be joining you. I work at Backstage, uh, just in mm-hmm. case you're wondering why I'm here. Um, I've been with Backstage for the last four years. In fact, uh, just last month, it was my backstage anniversary. So, Congratulations. Thanks so much. And yeah, I'm in the UK, mm. if you can tell by my accent, from <laughs> Wales, which is a bit different from the English accent, if nobody knows sure. what Wales is, it's to the left. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and I've been here working um, on the ground and letting people know that they can use Backstage as actors and creators uh, to make their projects great totally. or to find work. Totally, four years and uh, a lot of progress has been made in those four years. Yeah, when we started four years ago, it was like a chicken and the egg type situation. We had to find actors who would be interested in in using backstage and then um, people to cast projects through backstage. And it's like balancing the two. You need the actors for the projects and the projects for the actors. So it's been, yeah, it's been a nice journey. And um, yeah, it's it's crazy how much we've grown in the limit. Well, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. First of all, what is your title? What is your title? So my title is UK Casting Specialist. And what does that entail? And how is that, how has this like changed in these four years? Um, so uh, my my work has changed, yeah, quite a lot actually. When we first started in the UK, it was sort of just padding out where we could fit into the industry here and mm. understanding where our place might be and how we might be useful to actors and people who are creating content. So now I am um, giving loads of talks at um, film schools and we get heavily mm-hmm. involved with film festivals. Um, I speak on a yes. lot of panels. I should give a bit of background actually as to why I'm working in this sector. So I've worked in casting for mm. 10 years. Yes, okay. So um, so when I joined Backstage, I had already worked in casting for, for a long time. Um, and so I was brought on to let the, the team in the US know more about the UK industry. Um, And as part of that now, my work developing backstage is working a lot with partnerships and brands and organizations and film schools. And it's all about just letting people know that we're here and that people can use us and that we're a good good resource. Well, and you've had some wonderful guests um, on the slate, UK guests, I suppose. Do you have like a, can I ask you for like the highlights or the... um, (laughs) <laughs> Not your favorites, but like uh, who are the, some of the biggest names we've booked? Do you know what? That's something about this year had, that has been my mm. my highlight because, as you were just saying at sure. the top there, I've wanted to get involved in the podcast and um, we do loads of talks and things like that over here. But um, I've not really been majorly involved in editorial, but with the casting side of things slowing down a little bit, right. I've had right. more time to get involved in that. Mm-hmm. So I've been managing the uh, yeah the UK arm of the slate and it has been amazing, <laughs> not only for the yeah. people that we've spoken to, but like 
the engagement from the UK audience and the US audience with the UK content as well has just been incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like the community have really felt how dedicated we've been to Wonderful. staying connected and, and and making sure people feel like mm. we're there for them, you know? That's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, it's been amazing and I've loved it. Um, yeah, we've spoken to Maisie Williams and Paul Mescal and uh, mm-hmm. Russell Tovey and um, oh my gosh. Really it's, great conversations. Yeah, the they've yeah. been great. Everyone's been so given with their time. It's been really lovely. And I hope that that's something that is going to, continue through and you know not even just the Absolutely. actors it's the cast and directors and the agents we've spoken mm-hmm. to as well um yeah i've yeah. learned loads myself so it's been great totally do you want to like help me introduce today's guest oh my god yeah okay. your personal friend it's not like it's it's a pretty tenuous connection he's from the uk you're from the uk <laughs> <laughs> He's actually, oh, well, listeners, part of my thinking in saying we can finally get Hannah on the podcast is we actually have quite a few Brits um, coming up, quite a few um, guests from the UK coming up on the podcast. This week's guest is John Boyega. It's sort of a British invasion on the podcast. Yes, I'm here for it. I really am. And you said that you saw the project that he's that he's currently in, which is Small Axe, Steve McQueen's Small Axe. Isn't he a son? He's just an amazing... He's one of the most charismatic actors working today, I think. I think it was Sunday that John's um, episode came out. Mm. Um, and all of them have been, I keep calling them episodes, but they're, they're films. It's an hour and 20. They're films. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, his is excellent. There's um, a real struggle there with his morals and... Um, mm. Uh, his relationship with his father and um, there's just there's a lot going on and he gives such an amazing layered texture's performance it's gorgeous so um, totally. definitely watch that he really is a chameleon in, in this he transforms into this police officer who his name is Leroy Logan and he was a real police officer who this is just depicting the only the very beginning of his career he would go on to become this member of the community which the movie doesn't cover and how different from Finn from Star Wars. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, he's incredible. He's well, gosh, Hannah, thank you so much. Um, is there anything else we were supposed to cover today? I'm so pleased that you could join us and we could catch up. <laughs> yeah, I am I am loving all of the growth in the UK. Obviously, that's been my job anyway, yeah. but just mm. um seeing more UK content and um editorial department are doing such an amazing job there is one thing that i'll say as well which is um something that i think is is really welcomed here is having all of this information for how Mm. to build your career i don't think there is well i know there hasn't been a real hub for this type of information before in the Mm. uk so i think that's something that backstage is really bringing and the fact that now we've got so much uk the uk slate and we've got all these uk actors who are speaking with you on the podcast is just really lovely to be thinking of us as one it's lovely we are all one i know again especially after the pandemic it really is a community without orders for sure. So we will link in today's episode description and in the article for this episode to Hannah's How to Get Cast on Backstage in the UK by Hannah Williams, Mm -hmm. um, because that includes just really all, everything you need. The call sheet, the guide to the headshot. Hannah is uh, boots on the ground in the UK. She has all the connections. She knows the ins and outs, and she knows where backstage fits into that, as you were saying, so. Yeah, check it out. Stay tuned, listeners, to hear this interview with John Boyega, followed by casting insider Christine McKenna Torella's segment, which today will, I believe, include a kind of a UK focus because it's the British invasion on the podcast. We're taking over. I love it. I'm so pleased. <laughs> and we'd love to have you back on. Any any excuse. It doesn't have to be UK actors on the podcast. Well, you just let me know and I'll be there with my headphones and my phone ready to record whatever in you need in your home office yeah Perfect. in my loft <laughs> in your loft well thank you so much hannah all right thanks so much jack hey if you are an actor or an aspiring actor or someone at the beginning of your artistic career and you haven't signed up for backstage yet and you don't know how it works i have good news for you Backstage is offering 30 whole days completely free just for our In the Envelope listeners. If you visit backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope, you will have full access to the site 
where you can make a profile, upload a headshot, upload a reel, start applying to the thousands of casting notices uploaded every single day on the world's number one casting platform. Again, we are giving listeners of this podcast 30 days completely free to try out Backstage. Go to checkout, that's backstage.com slash subscribe, and enter the code ENVELOPE. If you want to be in contention for an Emmy or for an Oscar or for a Tony or for a SAG award, do as many of the guests on this podcast have suggested and use Backstage. We are here for you. Again, free 30-day trial, backstage.com slash subscribe. Enter the code ENVELOPE. Trained on London's stages and being starstruck by cinema since childhood, John Boyega was always meant to be an actor and producer since 2016 with his production company Upper Room Entertainment Limited. After breaking out with sci-fi film Attack the Block, John was launched to superstardom as Finn in Star Wars The Force Awakens and its two sequels. He's also appeared in Imperial Dreams, Detroit, Pacific Rim Uprising, and now Red, White, and Blue, one of the films in Steve McQueen's Small Axe anthology series. Here's our interview with the brilliant John Boyega. John, how are you? We uh, we last spoke, I think, just before Force Awakens came out, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good, man. How you been? Good. (laughs) Good. Good. It's uh, interesting to chat with you remotely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this um, is the new, the new world, man. It's quite different from a regular press junket, right? I mean, I'm at home. Uh, the bottom half doesn't necessarily match up to the top, and, and, and I, like <laughs> I like it. <laughs> right, I like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have half an hour with you. I want to jump right into it. How is 2020 going for you? This is, this is quite the monumental year, and uh, I want to ask you about small acts, of course. Mm-hmm. But I, want, I just want to ask, you know, how, how is your artistic philosophy you know, how was it before 2020 and how is it after? How has that changed? Oh, it's changed in so many different ways. Um, I, th- I think it's been a huge transition, obviously, for everybody. Um, and in spending so much time alone and having that good, good couple of months in the quarantine and in isolation from everybody else, there was definitely mm-hmm. a lot of self-growth, a lot of self-judgment, just a lot of being with self. Uh-huh which a lot of us are not actually used to. I know of me, for one, who, who lives quite a busy life, when thing, especially when things were um, back up and running, um, found that being by myself was quite beneficial and fruitful. I was able to, um, you know, as you said, expand on my creativity and um, think about what kind of career I'd like to have. And especially now the pandemic kind of aligned with um, the end of the franchise films for me. It was yeah. like, you know, that I was at that crossroads anyway with, with just looking ahead and deciding what to do. So I guess that's what the transition has been like for me. And then being emotionally affected by the news that we've received, spanning from, you know, what we know is going down in, in, in the States, currently what's happening with uh, the SARS reform in Nigeria and various other, you know, losing Chadwick Boseman, yeah. you know, various other things that has happened has just been let's say, quite hard to, to watch from comfort, if you, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, totally. So that, that has perhaps maybe changed me and made me much more intense and proactive with things and has sparked up some unique events this year for me that I didn't, I couldn't have possibly tell, I couldn't tell you I would have been involved in certain things and, you know, and one of them being working with Steve McQueen in Red, yeah. White, Blue and, you know, it's just been, it's been cool in some aspects, but it's just been 2020 mad. Yeah. I also, I like that you said self-judgment. I mean, that must be true too. There's a, there was a period, especially all that time alone of it's not all meditative and introspective and nice. It's yeah. also. It, rather, it's, not, it's not always, I will be the best I can be. I can do <laughs> anything I put my mind to. No, it's, it, it's sometimes, um, cause you were able to slow down for a bit where you're not working as much and not working as consistently to look at other aspects of your life that sometimes it just becomes a subconscious thought. Sure. Uh, I guess with slowing down, it has given me that, that opportunity, which I really do, I do appreciate. And what, what are those other aspects of life? I mean, if it's other than acting, obviously mm. you're not doing very much acting in quarantine. So what were the other things that you were doing to kind of cope, but also, as you say, those things that are expanding your 
values, expanding your, um, I don't know, identity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, before, before, um, actually having to go into quarantine in March, um, I had already set up, uh, we were a few years in the game with upper end productions. So yes. we have, ongoing development deals that obviously did not stop during the pandemic. And we were in contact with, with LA as, as, as much as we, we could be in terms of carrying on development. What's great about being a producer as well as an actor is that when you are not in front of the cameras, you're behind the, car- uh, the cameras, either trying to convince somebody to come into your project and fund it, <laughs> or you're yeah. trying to convince, convince um, a, an actor to attach their name to a project so you can go sell it in the market or you yeah, or you're bloody talking to somebody about a location, you know, and, and budgeting something. Mm-hmm. But then you're like, look, it's a pandemic. We don't know whether or not we're, we're, we're budgeting something that could potentially just change or whether we're being proactive. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're dealing with a whole other world now that I'm much more used to. So at the beginning of, of, of quarantine, I was just, it was just back to back because the, the less people that were, you know, on screen, so much has been happening in terms of developing projects um, um, off the screen. So that kept me busy. Uh, and then obviously family time and, and um, just hobbies as well. Like I went out for walks and shit, you know, <laughs> yes. people were like, what the hell are you doing here? I was like, what are you doing here? I'm going for a walk. You know, I was just able to live, <laughs> live a life, you know. And it's, it was such a whirlwind since, as you say, the, did you say the franchise years? I love that. Like, yeah, like, man. You have not been able to take a walk since Star Wars began. Hey, listen, I don't even <laughs> get it. I don't get it. It's been, um, you know, I, I genuinely, during kind of like maybe episode eight, kind of imagined that I'd finish nine and be the character that no one spoke about after I can quietly disappear into a cottage in Coswold <laughs> with a little fluffy white dog called Pippin. Uh-huh. But, uh, here we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would also say that Small Axe is sort of the maybe biggest, like big profile project since. So yeah, yeah. of course, filming it before 2020 and the pandemic and everything that's, that's happened, how has your, how, how has the fact that, I mean, you looking at this project and you looking at this role, how has that changed since everything? Um, I, I guess that every role for me is kind of a mystery because sometimes, you know, you can get into a habit of pre-planning how you're going to portray a role. Mm. But then with working with a director like Steve McQueen, who forces you not to play, but to be. Okay you notice several different things in your performances that you didn't, you can't remember performing, just mm. can't remember it. So cool. And I would say that Small Acts is the project so far where a lot of it I watch and I go, I don't know who that man is. Wow. I really don't know who he is. Um, and that's something for me that's been, it's actually quite nice to, to, to see, you know, it's, it's just not, I just feel with the embodiment of Leroy, his mannerisms, his, very bassy, he's mature and still and subtle. It's, it's, it's so cool to just see character explored and centered in on in, in, in that way. And that for me, just watching it has been the most kind of like, I'm like, was it quarantine? Was that, I wasn't angry then, I was all right. I'm, you know, just oh, you know, sure. several different things. Like, what the f- yeah. it's, just, it's just, but it's cool to see. Is that almost the goal? The goal is to lose yourself so much in the character that when you're watching it later, you're like, I don't even remember this. For me, for me yeah. Cool. For me, was that was Attack the Block, you know. Uh huh. You know, I, I watched Attack the Block and was just kind of like, <laughs> it might as well crud. Like, I'm not like that, you know. I'm like, I'm, I'm more talkative, more conversational, more, yes. you know. So it's like just mm. being different sides of yourself, you know. I don't know how actors, you know, other actors feel, but for me, right. it's the most beneficial to see yourself embody maybe the just the, the core truth of a character to the point where you're just like, I know that I'm not me in that moment, you know. Sure. I mean, some actors don't like watching themselves at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some actors like, like I remember always asking Adam Driver on purpose, you're going to watch it? He's like, no, no. Oh, he doesn't. Oh. Uh, no, he doesn't really, he doesn't, he doesn't really watch his, watch his, watch his projects. Um, and I respect it because for him, the goal is the same. We both have the same goal to, to live and breathe from the truth of our characters. You know, I have been a member of the audience for so long and a passionate member of cool. cinema and film that I refuse to let that go just because it's in my own movies. So that's my only thing. Gotcha. So I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch that shit. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I might even pretend like it's not me, but it, you know, right. unfortunately I 
you know, well, fortunately, I, it was Star Wars. Who's not going to watch? I'm watching Star Wars. I'm watching Star Wars before <laughs> yeah, I was in Star Wars. So it's like, of course, I'm going to watch it. So yeah. I, I guess also with me wanting to be in projects I'd like to watch, uh-huh. I also look for other people's performances and I'm excited to see other people in it also. So Right. And of course, that's what that's also p- partly what guides what projects you take on is, is whether you would want to see that project. Yeah, just stuff I want to see, stuff I... Cool. really affected me growing up the kind of I mean, what was I watching it's so random and this is kind of like an anima- animation I was watching uh, the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius the movie <laughs> I remember like that being my favorite movie growing up and I'd be like, I'd be like oh, huh? you know, in my head as a producer now oh, now we can develop something that this is, you know so now that is like a lucrative you know thought to have and, and insight so um I you know I just enjoy I just still enjoy the fact that I can still go and watch films and I don't feel like a member of the industry. I'm just too much of a fan. Which is important as a producer to be almost a, wear a little bit of a hat of an audience member. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's, there still is, you know, a, a, a prominent um, prominent difference, you know, that, that you do have. Of course, you know, most producers come in a group and you're each the guardian angel of your own field. Someone is budgeting, someone is, you know, creative. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, for, for, for someone like me who has maybe expanded specific vision, you know, I do all of it so it's it's nice to be able to you know juggle that but at the same time drop that hat go cinema watch something like transformers and be like you know yeah it's not like oscars but but you know it's cool with it (laughs) it's still inspiring yeah yeah it still is still can inspire me for sure sure was attack the block the first time you saw yourself on like on a big screen yeah and was that i have have you seen it recently yes okay Yes. You've changed uh, since then. Yeah, I have. I've changed <laughs> since then. Um, I think, I think one, one thing about me looking at Attack the Block is remembering what the behind the scenes moments were like uh-huh. while shooting mm-hmm. each scene. So it's not always about performance and that kind of stuff. It's just about where was I at in life? Like, uh-huh. who was my girlfriend? Like, who was I talking to? Who was I, like, who was I going to eat? Let me just remember where my life cool. was w- at and it's in just spotting those differences um because what's funny is that even if i was to play the dude again and play moses again moses will always be moses you know there's there's okay. he's actually a a guy it's like he's actually a character a role there's like a there's a subtlety there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a energy there's a way you roll the way you talk the way you walk that goes with him and sometimes i feel the feeling of like oh man i miss just being that dope like just being that cool, that chilled. I don't need to say shit. And people know exactly what I'm thinking. I, I miss being able to play like that. So you really do think of your characters as, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, as separate people or as people that you can oh, they're definitely I'm into. Sure. Yeah. Like, and learn from. Yeah. 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 Because it's, you know, even, I, rem- I remember, um, you know, you being on set of, of, of Star Wars and um, just loving, loving, in, enjoying the freedom of just vulnerability sometimes. Just being like the guy in the scene that just goes, I do not want to go in there because that <laughs> just doesn't make no sense. It doesn't look right. You know, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy that kind of, you know, comedy that kind of slightly remind me of that early day Eddie Murphy stuff where he's just sure. like, it's just like, uh, uh, I'm not trying to get involved in that. Um, so I always love that dynamic and, I guess that's what comes with character. You know, our job is to portray people that we are not. And sometimes we take from ourselves and sometimes the story is too far fetched and you have to do the work, you have to travel. I find that in my career, I've had to travel so much to these char- for these characters ah. that sometimes I just watch it and I go, like, that's mad. Like, I'm, or I will watch my parents watch it because they're the best. They'll say, that is not you. Like you would oh. never, you, you know, that helps me, you know, kind of like keep that character stuff going. I like it. Oh, that's so interesting. You ever think about your parents when you're doing the work or doing the acting itself? I think the only time I thought about my parents doing work when I did a uh, HBO pilot with Spike Lee. And this oh, okay. was right after Attack the Block. This is when I first got, look, American representation. Things were looking good. Mm. There was a nude scene that involved two women, a bottle of Hennessy, and that's all you need to say. <laughs> that was that's, like... That's why you think about like, your parents, yes. I was like, yo... I don't know how HBO gets down. I was like, yo, I don't know if my, yeah, my pa- I don't know if my parents are going to survive this one. You know? <laughs> but it's also Spike Lee, so it's it's a big... Hey, look, Spike says the Hennessy and the bum cheeks are in the scene. 
it is for an artistic choice, you know, you've got, to, but you've got to do what must be done, you know, and it was loosely based on, you know, Tyson was going through that. So it, it was a great scene. So okay, interesting. I, 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 yeah, that's the only movie I thought about mom and dad. That's so interesting. Okay. So in this vein of like, of transforming, I love this idea of like going far into characters. You've rarely, that you haven't played real people that often. And so mm-hmm. for small acts, how much of it is becoming something other than yourself versus becoming a person who exists, a person who's still alive even? Yeah, I mean, it's still this, the, the same the same kind of thought process for me still stands because Leroy is not me. You know, our decision, the decisions that he uh, makes as a human being, as a, an individual that has influenced this story, I have to research to understand some of them. Okay. Some of them I relate with because me, me and Leroy are both Londoners, both Black men. So there's, there, there are, you know, lines, but... Ideally, we're both two completely different human beings. So sometimes in situations where I feel I, as John John Boyega, would react completely different, I have to understand that Leroy Logan, for his motivations, for who he is, uh, would would you know react differently too. And with having a director like Steve, who is so particular, it would affect things like the fact that Leroy Logan is a very clean man, perhaps maybe to a point where you know things just can't be out of line. Um, and in mm. certain scenes where, you know, the director says, oh, you're just putting that shirt in that bag. You know, I know as an actor, wait, I am Leroy. So John's just going to put a shirt in and do what he's doing. Leroy is going to fold up each piece God. and put it in. And so that just helps, you know, inform character for me. Both of That's so cool. Yeah. What about the fact that this is portraying, as, as I guess, as always with when you're playing a real person, you're only portraying a slice rather than their entire life. So did you have to think about everything that happens after the events of Small Axe and how that would inform Small Axe? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and also the, the cause I, it's funny, I always think about, you know, and this, maybe this comes from, from my childhood. I always used to miss movies when they ended. I used to struggle as a mm-hmm. kid with movies ending. I, they used to end and I used to be like, like, okay. Like I used to ask my mom and dad, so where are they now? Like, what's happening with their characters. Like sure. in that, that same kind of child, the boy in me hasn't let that go. So even in things that I'm in, when we film certain scenes, I know that there are certain scenes that are not in there. I'm like, what are they doing in between this? Like what has led to this moment? And whereas we don't see certain other particular details, like the change in their society, the fact that, you know, we've shot a scene that was probably on the Friday of Leroy's life, but we haven't got the Saturday and the Sunday in which yeah. he involving his family and the community what are those other components and and that comes with you know conversations with Leroy and and, and chopping it up um, via that kind of discussion is it intimidating at all to talk to to work and talk with Leroy with a real person I think for me no because I am I like human beings human (laughs) beings Human beings are very, very interesting to me. And I, I observe, I observe people a lot. Like I remember I was in, I was in the town center with my, me and my sister. I went to the town center, we went, just went for shopping. And I also had my mask up, my glasses on, have a nice <laughs> incognito. Have a incognito now. So I have a nice little <laughs> hat, which, you know, distract people from the face. And I saw, I saw two brothers discussing and you know if they brother i'm so sorry i heard this convo i heard it they're listening but they were just discussing their family past and the fact that they were going to shop for clothes and then after go to a family meeting that was about you know where their family was going their kind of conflicts with their dad and there were two brothers who looked very similar one of them i noticed was quite stern and strict with how he wanted the process to be the other one had more had more empathy and just from a distance, I was just like to my sister, can you just like, just wait for a second or what would I tell you? Yeah, I just tell her to just wait for a second. I just pretended to just take the clothes and I just watching these guys, watching the way they move. And I'm just like, huh, there's a movie um, that I actually, a script that I actually read and I didn't know how to fill these roles. I could potentially play twins and didn't know how to fill these roles. And I was just like, I like this dynamic. So sometimes it just... You know, you can just be living, you can just be out there. It's what you keep your, your, yourself open to that could inspire your, your work. Research comes from anywhere. Research can be anything. Anything. Cool. And, like research can be, could be anything for sure. And it, even like studying mannerisms, studying their physicality, the, the, the way they physically move, stuff yeah. like that. 
all, all, all of that is, is, is super important. I remember being on set and um, of Star Wars and shooting in a particular way, being like, pow, 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 pow. and Daisy was just like, why are you shooting like that? I was like, <laughs> video games. <laughs> I, couldn't get the, I couldn't get the posture right. I want my shit to look right. You gotta have your own stance. <laughs> so I just, I'm also, I'm just such a fan of the detail of, of sure. film. You know, I just like, I'm just, I, I used to watch hours of B-roll, you know, when YouTube first came out and they had B-roll videos now started coming out on YouTube. Oh I used God. to be obsessed with just looking at this onset environment, just, you know, and sometimes they have it without music. You just hear the normal oh, sounds wow. and the people conversating. I just had a really distinct um, interest for it. I've never heard of that. That's such a cool, like, like for, it's actually great advice for beginning actors to, soak in the environment of a set by watching b-roll yeah that's how i dropped out of university man oh, i was i'll tell you this crazy story i haven't told anyone this story publicly before i was at i was at university um university of greenwich and you know university of greenwich has been used for various locations uh, mm. thor dark world has been shot there and while my lecturer is going you know um teaching us through um, uh, a lesson we just there was an explosion and the floors of the lecture room started to vibrate. Oh wow! So thinking, what the hell is what the hell is going on? I go to, go towards the window. I see there's a film set downstairs shooting, and it's Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, Johnny Depp on top of two carriages as Jack Sparrow, just riding through this town that they they transformed some of our university grounds to look like that. I stayed there for hours and never went back to uni because I was like, I just need. To- that's what caused you to drop that. And you know what's so mad about it is that every time I've seen Johnny Depp face to face, he's been Jack Sparrow. So the next yeah. time I saw him after that was D23 and he was dressed as that Jack Sparrow. So I'm like, every time I see you, I get like a light bulb, dude, that you're always in costume. We don't know what it is, wow. but it's like, it's art. The way art has made, interacted with my real life as well has been so cool and crazy to me. So, I, you know. That's actually beautiful. And it also, it goes back to what you were saying about like, you you are in touch with your childlike sense of play, correct? Yeah, man. Because, you know, I remember when, you know, the, at the office sometimes, um, let's say it will be a, 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 an intense day creatively. Everybody's just trying to get a treatment done and we're trying to send it into a studio, or one of our other co-production offices to, 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 to get our story out there. But we're, we're struggling with story and everyone's in the office frustrated, mm. you know, I'm the type of CEO that comes out the window and say, guys, this ain't no cancer research. <laughs> ah. You are not politicians. Right. You are artists. You are, ha- you are here to tell stories influenced by the realities and emotions of what we live. Mm-hmm. So perhaps you guys haven't lived enough mm-hmm. in your weekend to be inspired by the week. So maybe what you should do, take a break off, you know, trying to brainstorm and watch something, be inspired by something, gotcha. see somebody else struggle, you know, have someone else to relate to. Mm. So that's kind of like more my, you know, my process was thing. And then, you know, the guys at work would just be like, yeah, man, let's like, you know, when you're just, you know, as a writer, you know, if you're, you have, we deal with writers too, have writer's block and, and, and sometimes yeah. you're not going to get your three page sample document out of them in time. So you have to think of, of, of processes that will, will, will help inspire genuine, you know, uh, uh, genuine inspiration. And that's the process I use just as an actor, you know, by totally. myself. Totally. Yeah. It is all about channeling inspiration and figuring out how to. Yeah. Artists, that's what we have to use. It's not always, it, we, we do not always have to embody the, the corporate um, uh, image. You know, the right. Yeah. That's beautiful. Gosh, we, I mean, we're backstage. So we're all about the craft and career advice and you've given us such like, in intricate details to the process, what is your number one piece of advice for those just starting out in the industry? I, know. I say this, um, I remember when I was starting out and the, and, 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 and obviously because of the current times you are thinking about your future, um, you're thinking about your finances and your prospects. I think it's important to understand the type of industry you're, you're joining, um, the opportunity um, that is available and the different ways in which you can you can enter and, and, and be a part of something. One way doesn't work for every, for everybody. So for example, mm-hmm. Daniel Kaluuya's introduction to the industry was very much different um, at mine, but I feel like it's being present. Um, um, it's consistently staying a fan of, of cinema. 
mm. and of all, um, and having really good knowledge of each department. Because for me, I knew that if acting necessarily didn't work out, that I would I wouldn't mind working in the administration side. I wouldn't mind doing um, being an assistant on costume. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind you know doing you know getting into some some concept art, being a, a concept artist. Okay. There were several different things that I was exposed to, which made my prospects um, much more healthy. So I think that the education is the first thing, and making sure the the position that you choose please specialize in it and prioritize specializing in that position, you know, mm-hmm. because sometimes we get distracted by just wanting to go for the opportunity. And sometimes the opportunity kind of distracts from the cooking, the slow mm-hmm. burn need to be able to be right for the opportunity so that you can actually have that opportunity be beneficial to you. Um, so training is the first thing. Train, train hard, be a fan of what you love, mm-hmm. study other people who have struggled the same way you have even mm-hmm. worse. The people who struggled worse will make you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> make you feel so bad. You'd be like, "Damn, he was on the streets with a," da, da, da. you know. So it, you know, it's, it's all about just calibrating and trying to find what specifically motivates you, and your freedom in that is knowing that there are no rules that could limit you mm-hmm. as a creative. Wonderful. There are no rules. That's so true. Yeah. I actually was going to ask if you, if it wasn't acting. I mean, if it wasn't acting, what else would you do? Can I ask, like, why acting? <laughs> acting has been a part of. It's been it's been a part of my my rise socially as an unknown kid from London. Like I wasn't good at football, I wasn't the academic kid, I wasn't the uh, you know part of the, the the guys that played the nerds that played Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon because it was too expensive to upkeep with that kind of culture. <laughs> sure, right. So there was no there was no group for me for a long while when all of the other kids had settled in. And when my teacher gave me a scene to perform in, and it was me playing a leopard, I had to just play this leopard and just do yeah. this scene where you just, I just had to, you know, um, I just do this scene just off the cuff. And I just loved it. It's the genuine love that I feel. I think it's like me in the love of your life and feeling like it, mm. it is you. I feel most comfortable, you know, doing this and expressing myself and, and being seen as, a, as an artist. You know, I get to be melodramatic sometimes, and people laugh and get it because my identity in acting is so solid. You know, I get to live in my true identity uh-huh. because of my of my job, you know, and because of how that, you know, can impact, you know, even myself, you know. So I okay. and I and I love the the space, the freedom, the people I get to meet, the countries I get to travel with to, and how I get to use my privilege that now and now and I have to help other people. That's just been it's been just really cool to be able to do that. That's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, John, thank you so much. I have to let you go, but can I ask you one more question? Yeah, um, man. What is one performance you think every actor should see and why? Ooh, it's a tough I think, one. Oh, it's such a tough one. Oh my gosh. Maybe something you've seen recently? Who is the lead guy in Lovecraft Country? I really love Jonathan Majors. He was, yes, he was also in The Five Bloods. I think yes. this is, I think he is the future. I think he's super he's amazing. Talented. I think he's nuanced as well. I can tell he's very intelligent, very smart. Um, so yeah, he he's somebody that I've been I've been going because I actually watched Lovecraft Lovecraft Country and I was like, wait, I've I've seen this guy, but I never yeah. done research. And now I'm on the Five Bloods and I'm gonna be going through I think some TV stuff that he's done back in the day and stuff. So yeah, man, watch that guy, man. He he's he's the truth. That's such a great answer. I just watched the finale last night. So yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, John. This is so great. No, nah, thanks so much, man. Have a good rest of your press junket day. Take care. And now it's time to hear from Christine McKenna Torella, our backstage casting insider. I will let her take it away. Hi, guys. Christine McKenna Torella here, the backstage casting insider. It's the British invasion this week, and I love that you guys got to hear from Hannah Williams. She and Neil Kennedy are part of the backstage casting team in the UK. And over the last few years, we've really built up a phenomenal British community for both actors and creators on this site. And there are so many exciting casting opportunities coming from that region in particular this year. Hannah does a lot of our celebrity interviews for UK-based actors, and she holds panels as part of our Slate programming. If you've missed any of that in the last few months, you can head over to our Backstage YouTube channel to connect with more content from Hannah. 
I highly recommend it. She's a fantastic interviewer and host, and both she and Neil are casting experts that are super knowledgeable in their field. So my casting calls for this week are from the UK region. I wanted to highlight that part of the world. Again, really great casting opportunities happening over there. So my first highlight is a casting call for a BBC drama. Emma Stafford Casting is currently looking for suggestions for a new BBC drama. Please note, All submissions must be made by a parent or guardian because they are looking for a teenage boy. So go on the site and have a look at the details of that project. Secondly, I have a lifestyle promo. It will be shooting at home. It's a work from home opportunity in the first and second week of of December. You're just needed for one day. It is a app that is a Christian app for meditation and prayer, which sounds like a very interesting project. Finally, I want to highlight a commercial casting for a diverse family. Creative studio Lobster is making an international TV commercial seeking a real family of four. So it would be as follows, a male-female partnership playing 18 plus, any ethnicity, and their two children of any gender playing ages of 10 and up, any ethnicity. The family should be able to take direction and they're seeking diverse backgrounds, so everybody should apply. This will shoot in London for two days and it pays £8,000 in total. So take a look at that casting call if that's something you know applies to you or might apply to someone you know. That's all from me today. I will be back next week with more tips and advice. Have a beautiful week. In the Envelope is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City and Soundbox LA, Mark Brow Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Thanks as always to our producer extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and to the team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. That's right, 100% free. For more exclusive content, join us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Would you like us to interview next? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another glimpse in the envelope.